Welcome back to another video everyone. My name is Kyle. I am a full-time options trader and founder of Opinicus Holdings, the premier option trading community. Today we're going to be following up with our last video which took place on April 24. Basically what we talked about in that video, if you missed it, I'll go ahead and put a link below. But what we talked about in that video was the potential topping pattern that we see in the S&P 500 SPY or SPX chart here. In that video, we mentioned to watch for an 8 to 10% move lower into the 400 and 390 level, which are major weekly levels. Now, at this point, basically, we have seen that 400 tested. We're sitting around 405 right now. So we could say that, you know, that move has pretty much been made. Um, that was from this day right here, April 20th. So if we go ahead and, and just see what kind of percentage that was. That was uh, about eight and a half percent to the most recent trading day low. So we saw that that eight to ten percent move lower. The question at this point, as it always is, is what's next? And so what we have seen this past week with the close lower is something that is actually pretty rare. We are officially five consecutive weeks lower in the S&P 500, which is only the ninth time in the past 30 years. And I've gone ahead and outlined this on the chart here. Each one of these red lines is an occurrence where the S&P 500, the, the SPY or SPX chart was down five consecutive weeks in a row. Now, most would probably believe this precedes a really strong market climate over the forward three months. But as we talked about in the prior video, tightening financial conditions and poor market liquidity make it difficult to argue for a kind of short term rally similar in size to what we saw in early March. Now, if you remember, again, we touched on this in the last video, but if you remember, we saw this unbelievable rally sometime in mid-March that was uh, from down here in this area up into these highs. That was an 11% move. And the reality is, is at this point, a move of that nature seems pretty unlikely. Now, just looking back here, what we were just talking about with the five week, five consecutive weeks lower in the market as you can see where these occurrences took place and kind of what happened afterwards so on this one in june 2011 the market did see kind of a near-term bounce this is the weekly chart that we're looking at but then proceeded to fall uh, we do have these boxes are from the last video where we where we analyzed prior topping patterns but you do see another scenario here where s p 500 is down five weeks in a row and we have a massive move lower. So you can kind of get a sense of what we are in for. There's only a couple of occasions here where the market was actually higher after a series of five weeks in a row lower. And so this is just something to keep in mind as we continue to move forward. Looking at the actual data, um, this kind of presents the forward returns. You've got the one week return, two week, all the way up until 12 weeks. And under most scenarios here, there, there is some additional data. I've got uh, 20 points of data here. Under pretty much all of the scenarios, we do have the market lower after this type of five consecutive week lower scenario. And so just something to keep in mind. Again, this is not, you know, this is not a prediction or anything like that. I'm not saying the market is going to be lower in 12 weeks. This is just offering some data for you to get a sense of of where we are at with the market. Now, looking at breadth, one breadth metric we like to look at, if I resize this so you could see it, is percentage of stocks above the 200 MA. Now, the reason I like to look at this is because when we when we get into these kind of, let me just resize this here. When we get into these oversold conditions, uh, as far as this particular metric is concerned, it can set us up for a bounce. And so you can see this area here uh, pretty much marked the low 
for the COVID crash. And we do have a bunch of scenarios here where the breath metric crossed below 30%. So that's percentage of stocks above the 200 MA is below 30%. It can start to set us up for a bounce. Now we are not seeing that just yet. We're close, but we're not quite there. So that's something to keep in mind. To me, this means increased probability for more downside. Now I imagine volatility is going to continue to remain high in the S and P 500 in the broader market simply because we are looking for traders and investors are looking for a more clear path as far as inflation that that seems to be the the big kind of buzzword at this time and the good news is is that we may get a sense of what that is looking like this week and so what we have this week on may 11th and may 12th we have the core inflation rate year over year and the standard inflation rate year over year as well as the producer pricing inflation month over month rate and so these two days these two prints are going to be something that you want to keep an eye on because again the expectation right now is that inflation has peaked so these are the reports that are coming out they look all pretty much similar to this they're they're basically forecasting that inflation from this point is going to move lower so if we have some type of surprise with either one of these reports here and inflation is in fact showing to not be moving lower that may cause some shock to the market and so these are these are events that you want to keep an eye on again this is not a, a prediction or anything like that these are just things to watch for now with that in mind as well what we have seen and and what we need to watch for this week is i have outlined and kind of emphasized the weekly 100 MA. This tends to be an important level for when the market is dealing with uh, some type of economic recession or some other type of crisis. Uh, you could see it attempted to hold here with the COVID move, eventually broke. We have other scenarios here where it attempted to hold, eventually broke. And so going back, you can bring this up on your own chart. This is the 100 weekly MA. You can see the scenarios and, and the importance of the 100 MA. Again, it is the dark purple line here on the chart. We could see scenarios of where it was retested here in June 2006 and 2005, continued higher. And so this is, again, this is just a level to keep in mind. It it falls on 403 as of this video recording. So that ties in with our with our 400 kind of key level uh, psychological level that w that we've been watching for and calling for as a target. So this 403 400 area is going to be extremely important as far as how price reacts and how we continue to trade against this level. Now, again, in the last video, we mentioned, you know, if 400 fails as a second target, you want to watch for that move into the 390 area. So that continues to be uh, two main levels to watch for this week on the downside, the 400 and then the 390. Now, something to, something to consider and remember in this market environment, especially if you are somewhat new to trading, um, you don't want to be buying breakouts in this environment. We are, this, this is more of a bear market environment. The QQQ is in a confirmed bear market. SPY is not quite there yet, but given, given the metrics that we have seen, um, things like this, like percentage of stocks above the 200 MA only at 30% or around 30%. These are things you see in a bear market. So it's not a stretch to say we are, we are dealing with bear market conditions at this time. Now, with that in mind, you don't want to be buying breakouts. I see a lot of traders right now still looking for breakouts. And even though we are having um, some sectors like oil, things like that showing type of uh, breakout setups and breakout moves, a majority of them are failing. And so this is just something you want to keep in mind when, when most stocks are, you know, moving lower, 
uh, we tend to want to focus on the overall index. This is, this is the type of environment where individual stock beta, meaning how a stock moves in relation to the S&P 500 is down. So correlations are high. So majority of stocks are moving with the index. So the primary focus remains the index, whether your flavor is SPY or QQQ, that is for you to decide. I personally prefer to look at SPY because I trade a broader basket than just tech. But again, that just comes down to personal preference. So just to recap here, as far as levels, the main areas we're gonna be watching heading into this week and potentially into the following week, of course, these 405, just these recent lows, you've got an area here where 405 was tested as well as right here. Um, last week on May 2nd, we put in that kind of near-term low at 405 and then just this past Friday, the most recent trading session, we've got that low right there as well. So should 405 fail, just looking left on the chart, I mean, you've got a big volume void here. And so with the two things that we know, just looking at this, you can probably assume that, all right, we're gonna have 395 tested pretty quick. But what we have to consider is that 403 is our weekly 100 MA. That's gonna be an important test. And then 400 is a psychological level. Traders and investors are going to be looking at this level just because it's a round number. And that's, that's, what, that's human nature, that's what humans do. Below that, we've got this volume shelf here, the 395. And then as previously discussed a few minutes ago, we've got the 390, which is gonna be uh, that high volume node. And so, these are your downside reference points, levels to be watching. The index is trading on high volume, and so it's just even a greater reason to focus on the market. That is all for this video. Hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me in the think tank, or you could go ahead and leave a comment below the video, and I will get back to you. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next one.